Hello. Oh, oh, I have <laughs> no makeup, no hair done. So this is all natural Amy today. But anyhow, so uh, I had a lot of errands to run today. Here's a vlog. You know, for somebody who doesn't like doing vlogs, I've been doing a lot of them recently for you. And it's mainly because that's all I can really put on the channel right now until my next book is finished. Then I can concentrate more on real good quality videos. Um, but it's a way for me to keep you, keep me showing up in your YouTube newsfeed. And so I thought I would do this. It's really not hard for me to kind of take you along for the day since I'm already doing stuff anyhow. So I thought I would do that. But today has been busy. I, um, I am juniorless today. So I'm without my child today, which is awesome. Um, I was able to run to town. Um, I had to go to the bank post office I had to um, drop our taxes off which we're gonna talk about a little bit in this video because um, some of you are constantly asking me about this so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about taxes um, and then uh, so we had a really horrible windstorm come through uh, over the weekend I'm gonna show you right now So I know you can't see me, but um, we are in the middle of a pretty big windstorm. We had it come through last night, and it is definitely still here this morning. There's a giant tree outside of our window, and the boys are trying to get some stuff done so that we can try to live normal for the next however long this is going to take. Fire in a second. And um, we were without power for a couple of hours, which surprised me because normally we're without power for a while. Um, but we we got our power back pretty quickly, and normally we're the last ones to do it. But my mother-in-law and father-in-law do not have power still, and they are like a mile up the road from us. So um, I am making them dinner tonight. I'm making chicken pot pie for us, and so I'm making an extra chicken pot pie for them. Last night I took them dinner. We did, I did um, a new recipe of like barbecue meatloaf. It was really good. I should have recorded that one. Um, and took that to them with some garlic mashed potatoes and sourdough biscuits. And then tonight I'm taking them um, chicken pot pie which is like one of my go-to recipes for to take meals to people. But um, So I'm going to make the crust and make the filling. I've already got the chicken in the oven. It's just chicken tenderloins with salt, pepper, you know. Um, and then I'm going to clean up my kitchen a little bit. My kitchen's a little bit of a mess because we went grocery shopping yesterday. And I've been taking this time to work on my book today. So I haven't cleaned, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I planted these seeds. <clears throat> I don't remember if I showed you guys the video last week or not. Now these are, um, this is mustard spinach. I, I don't have to grow these inside. I just thought I'd try it. Contrary to popular opinion, these aren't leggy in my opinion. They actually looked like this out in my garden last year when I planted them. My garden is in full sun. So um, I think they're about normal. Here's some dill. Here is some cute little thyme plants popping up for herbs. These two are apparently duds, nothing growing here. And then over the weekend, I planted some peppers. This is my pepper tray, um, different kinds of peppers. I have bell pepper, jalapeno pepper, and Tabasco pepper. Then of course my little succulents are down here. It's actually, they've revived quite a bit. So that's good. But um, I've got some other stuff to plant too. I did not use my seed soil blocker this year. Um, I We are going on vacation sometime April, May-ish. And so my neighbor is gonna be so kind to take care of our animals and the greenhouse. 
And so a way for me to um, be easier for her, <laughs> I went ahead and bought these. Now this is a 100 pack and I can reuse it every single year. So I can save these essentially, if I remember, and then use them every year. And so I'm gonna put a link below to these in the description because I'm really liking them. And all I did was, and this is what I always do every year, I put an old cookie sheet under. Now this one actually, I bought this one at Home Depot. It came with a canister at the bottom. I just put, put a cookie sheet at the bottom and then fill the water up so that it naturally um, soaks the water up from the bottom instead of constantly pouring on top. When you constantly pour on top, that's when you start getting mold issues. And so we water from the bottom up. So now that the pie crust is done, let's talk about taxes for a second, okay? So a lot of you are new to the whole YouTube and homesteading and uh, all that jazz. Maybe you wrote a book, maybe you uh, started a blog. Somehow, some way, you might be making money off of an alternative income, right? Um, or maybe you are now suddenly self-employed and you have no idea what to do when it comes to taxes. So my husband and I have been self-employed for multiple years now. We have worked for ourselves for multiple years now. Um, even when I was the general manager of a regional magazine here in Virginia, um, I was self-employed. I was an independent contractor. And so we've had to pay taxes for several years now. Um, not uncommon for us. We do not get tax returns back. We do not, we do not have that awesome... Um, check that we get at the end of the year because, or at the beginning of the new year, because we don't pay in taxes because we don't have to. Um, but there are a lot of cool advantages of being self-employed and paying taxes, okay? So ultimately you are paying taxes, whether you have it taken out of your paycheck or whether you're paying it at the end of the year, right? Um, the difference is how much are you paying? If you overpaid, then you get a check back every year, right? Um, or if you paid in every year with a paycheck, you get money back at the end of the year. That's what people call a tax return. So most of the time for people that are self-employed like myself and my husband who owns his own business, we have to pay taxes at the end of, um, at the end of the year. So, you know, in April tax day comes and we pay, we pay taxes. So, um, we can pay taxes then if we can afford it. There are some years where we can't afford it. So we get an extension and we pay it by August, uh, or whatever date they predestine us to pay it. So normally, um, by by the end of the year, normally by September, we've paid off the previous year and we're getting ready to go into the next year. So um, it just depends. You know, we've had some years as, as little as 
$2,000. We've had some years as much as $10,000 that we've had to pay. So it just depends on how much money you come in, bring in, and it's not just about the money that you bring in, it's about the tax bracket that that income throws you into. So we could literally be $10 um, different than last year and it could totally throw us in a new tax bracket than it did the year before which means number one we either pay less than we did the year before or we pay a substantial amount more than we did the year before and it could be as little as a ten dollar difference that throws you into a new tax bracket and so taxes for us are you know a nerve-wracking time we trust in God that he will provide for us um, but we also know that you know it's difficult. It's difficult when you um, when you work for yourself because it is. But there are some perks to it as well. So, for example, um, if you're a YouTuber or a blogger or an author, you get to take expenses out. So, if you bought a new iPhone with the video camera on it because you wanted to make more videos, if you bought a camera because you wanted to do more photos for your blog, um, all of your website costs, all of uh, if you took um, a client to lunch. Um, if you get a haircut because you got to go to an interview, if you get new work clothes like this, if I if I buy new shirts um, that are specifically related to homesteading or or have to do with my business, then I can take that expense off. I can write it off my taxes. Um, if I buy work apparel that had something like the Fuel Homestead on it or Homesteaders of America on it, I can write that off of my taxes because it's something I bought specifically for my business. We always have expenses. In fact, there are some years where we strive to have expenses so that we don't have to pay more in when we know it's going to be a rough year. Um, so, for example, this year my book, I wrote my book. Um, I had expenses for writing my book. I had items that I had to purchase to create things. So, like the bottles for my tinctures that I made or the tins for the salve or the herbs that I had to buy for to make those things in excess to take pictures of them, to get the recipe right. You know, those are things that I had to take off as an expense, right? Um, for my website, I pay for a website, a hundred and some dollars a year. Um, and then off of my website, I have Amazon sales. I have um, Google ads that I make money off of and I make money enough to have to claim that on my taxes and so there are things that I can use that for too like the website cost and um, you know other things that I can expenses that I can take off so being self-employed whether you're a youtuber or a blogger or an author or a landscaper or just working on your farm there are a lot of awesome things that you can take off um, you know there are even things like if I bought a chicken coop specifically to make a video about a chicken coop series I can write that off my taxes ladies ladies this is how you talk your husband into these things <laughs> if I wanted to um, if I wanted to expand or build a greenhouse specifically for the the um, the fact that I want to put it on my website and I want to show people how to build it I can write it off of my taxes because I'm furthering education and knowledge and it's work and I'm making money off of it and I can take it off my taxes the materials of that that build so there are a lot of different things and a lot of amazing things when it comes to taxes but this is why we take our taxes very very seriously and why I wanted to talk to you briefly about it because we do hire an accountant every year to do our taxes for us I know that there are a lot of websites like like TurboTax and all these things that you can do yourself but um, there are also a lot of things that you don't know when you do it yourself. You know, we've learned a lot from our accountant. She has called us up and said, hey, you know, you can take this off your taxes. And we're like, heck yes, we had that. We will do that. So I encourage you, especially if you're just getting started into homesteading or a homestead business or YouTube or blogging or writing a book to seek out a good accountant. I've already requested multiple friends do this this year that are authors. Um, because she, a good accountant, is going to help you and walk you through and really um, dive into the loopholes that you can go through and the expenses that you can take off. And so I encourage you to do that this year. If, the, if that's something that you're getting into and you were on the edge and not sure if you wanted to file taxes yourself or hire somebody, hire somebody. If you can afford it, if you can afford it, hire somebody so that... Um, and that's an expense you can take off your taxes too, by the way. Um, hire somebody that 
will really uh, encourage you and be a mentor to you when it comes to your homestead business because it's really important that you are not paying an unnecessary amount of money that you maybe shouldn't have had to pay as much, right? So don't let the you know self-employment thing deter you from going out on a limb and living your dream. You know, I can write off a percentage of my electricity, my phone bill, my internet. Um, I can write off a percentage of square footage in my house because I use, I have a separate office specifically for work. And so there are lots of things that I had no idea when we first got started that we could deduct from our taxes to help bring that cost down. So check it out. But for now, I've got to get back to my chicken pot pie. are in the oven they're gonna bake for about 30 to 40 minutes just depends on when the pie crust is done and then I will go ahead and let them cool a little bit and take them to my mother-in-law's and until then I will clean up the dishes and that's about it husband is home uh, junior went to work with him so he is working out right now and I'm gonna get some more stuff done around here and I think that's about all the rest of the evening is gonna be me writing so I'll take you maybe along for that and then I will see you another time.